Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Good morning. It's Saturday morning, a couple of hours before the first football game starts. I'm sorry, Sunday morning. And then uh, today was the day that my friend Robert from Holbrook, a YouTube subscriber to my channel, who offered me the four uh, lawn mowers to pick up. Uh, with the condition that I fix the Toro in the four, I can keep the other three. So I used two episodes and actually got this going. Kind of a pain in the butt for a Kohler engine. I usually don't have this many problems with the Kohler engine. Uh, but anyway, we got it all dialed in. And then uh, today I took it out of the back of my garage because Robert was supposed to come over and pick it up. So about an hour before he was going to come, I came out here to drag it out of here just to test it, you know. It took me about three pulls to get it started. Once it started, it ran just fine for about five minutes. And then it just stopped all by itself and I couldn't figure out why. Sometimes it's the choke mechanism. With the thermostat on the muffler, if that's bad, the uh, choke either doesn't open or uh, it stays open and it's not choked so you can't even start it, you know what I mean? So that's the kind of hinky thing about the, the Kohler um, thermostat on the muffler. The choke system, the auto choke, sometimes it's kind of tricky if it's used, you know, for a while. Um, so I was testing it back and forth. I uh, got it started again. I actually mowed a little bit of my lawn and then it stopped again, you know. So I'm thinking to myself, using it for about five minutes and then it stops. Sometimes that's a magneto issue, that the magneto is on its way out so that it gives decent spark for that five minutes. But once it builds up heat, it loses the spark and it stalls the engine. Then I thought maybe it could be the carburetor too, right? Because remember that bowl was really rusty and I cleaned it out and stuff. But sitting in the garage for a week or so, the gas saturating the rust, you have little tiny bits of rust that may have you know, fallen off or gotten loose from the bowl. And now it's clogging up the jets up the emulsion tube. So I thought maybe that was it. So I decided to do a quick and dirty and drain the gas from it. When I removed the bowl, the gas was barely coming out, like drop, drop, drop. It shouldn't be drop, drop, drop. It should be a steady stream of fuel coming in so that the bowl is uh, amply filled with fuel at all times. So you figure you're running it, right? Drains all the gas, it doesn't have time to catch up because the fuel is taking so long to fill the bowl and it stalls. After it's sitting for a bit, let's see if it works. So I just went to walk my dog. So it's had plenty of time to fill up the bowl with gas. Let's see if it starts. Seems fine now. Perhaps you noticed that the gas cap was off. Do you remember in episode two when I was working on this? Um, I drained the gas in the gas tank because it had ass gas which was the primary reason why this thing would start right. So once we drained the ass gas, I got rid of the varnish buildup on the very bottom of the reservoir. Um, when I took the fuel line off, right, and drained the gas, it was a very slow stream. It was a stream, not a trickle, but it was a stream nonetheless, but it was slow until I removed the gas cap and then it flowed very quickly. So maybe this issue is that this gas cap is Donsky! Maybe the gas cap is Donsky. Meaning that the vent hole in here is blocked and it's not getting proper ventilation to allow the fuel to flow freely out into the hose, into the carburetor, and that's why it's not getting enough gas. Uh, which would cause the reason why you run it for a bit. It doesn't have time to catch up to the amount of fuel you're using. 
and it stalls. But it doesn't explain why it doesn't start back up again. You know what I mean? Because it, it gives it time to fill. So it could be a combination of the blocked gas cap vent, or it could be the magneto. I think to rule it out, I might have to test the magneto with a multimeter on ohms. And then uh, if it's bad, I'll swap it out with another one. I don't know if I have another one. Uh, but what am I gonna do about the gas cap problem? So if you look at the gas cap, there's a super tiny hole here, so small that you can't even stick a needle through there or whatever. Uh, it's so small, you know? And then where does that go? Where's the hole? You know what I mean? You can't even see where the hole is. Unless I remove this apparatus over here to see. But it doesn't look like you can, you know? It looks like it's all one piece. I mean, and then I don't want to really bust it. Should I just drill this hole bigger? Maybe I could do that. Or maybe I'll swap it out with another gas cap. But you know what? The other Kohler gas caps I have are on good machines. If I swap it out, I'll <laughs> I'll have a problem with that one. <laughs> and then I can't sell it, you know? You know what? No gas cap. Let's see if it starts. And it still kind of surges, so I have to work on this a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can drill a hole in the gas cap. Got the tiniest drill bit, the smallest one I got. I figure a hole's a hole, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's what she said. Anyway, just gonna go in there and... I know it's not supposed to go all the way through. Uh -oh. All the way through. <laughs> um. There's an O-ring in here. Remove the O-ring, and it looks like it's one molded piece. There's nothing I could remove. I'm thinking that in between here is the vent outputs. Like the hole goes into this area here, and the air can flow out these areas here, because there's no space or hole in this piece here, the middle. It's all one part, one piece. There's no hole, even under the O-ring. There's no way you can pry this part up. It's one, it's molded in one, one piece. So I'm thinking that the hole goes through just before this and it allows air to come out these vents here, which is also molded to the cap. I don't know even how they made this, you know, but uh, that maybe that'll work. There's the hole and now I can breathe through it. <clears throat> Maybe that fixed it. I'm gonna start this up and go mow my lawn a little bit <laughs> and see how long it lasts before it dies. <laughs> so it wouldn't start. So I'm gonna rule out the magneto. I'm gonna take the magneto off. It's very easy to remove. On the Except when your bolt is stuck. I'm gonna have to try to fix that in a minute. There's the magneto right here. Comes with the spacer. Just leave that there for now. I'm gonna try to get this uh, stud out. That one out. Looks like that's also a 10 millimeter. Huge bolts for the magneto, huh? This thermostat mechanism looks okay. I mean, it's hot, so it pushes it open. When it cools down, it'll retract. I don't know. I have to get this off. This is the fastest way to remove this stud, unless you had a really deep uh, 10 millimeter socket. These ratchet uh, wrenches work pretty well in the mid millimeter type. A lot of threads here. This 
So um, I'm getting ready to test the ohms on this uh, magneto. Anything over two point, um, disconnect this uh, kill wire to the brake assembly. Come on, man. As you can see, it's pretty rusty. Have to grind that out. So anyway, um, my multimeter, the one I've been using for a while, the one I got for free from Harbor Freight Tools, finally went kablooey to short circuit it. You know, the numbers wouldn't even show up anymore. Uh, fortunately for me, I had about two extra free ones that I had stored. Um, you know, Harbor Freight Tools doesn't give you free shit anymore. Coupons don't even really, they don't work anymore. They don't, they don't offer coupons. I guess they are losing too much money, whatever. Anyway, so, uh, that's fine. I don't really go there that often anyway. Especially now, <laughs> without uh, getting any good deals, you know? So I'm not getting anything here. Oh, you know what? I have, duh, I have it on AC200. You gotta put it on uh, 20,000. <laughs> That's weird. Try this. Holy cow, 10.5, 10.4. That's really good. That, I've never seen it that high before. 10.4. point four so it's consistently ten point four it means it's a very good magneto and I'm gonna go see if I have another one of these anyway so I looked and looked and uh, I didn't have this exact magneto I have a couple of Kohler ones but they look like and they look like they would fit right but uh, they look like they were for another different type of Kohler um, lawnmower from there it's very old you know could even be for a lawn tractor engine, I'm not sure. Uh, but, you know, testing this, this is more than high enough for it to give off spark. I think maybe I'll clean up the contacts a little bit. Kill contact here too. Maybe do the flywheel a little bit too. Alright. Do a little bit of this. Obviously this is left out in the rain a lot, which is why that magneto is so rusty. damage this magneto wire. You put some tape around it, it's good. And try to do the flywheel a little bit more. Covered up that stripped wire cleaned up the magnet and around the flywheel the posts and now I'm going to reinstall everything
So I think I figured out the problem. <laughs> After taking apart that entire top side, cleaning the flywheel, the magneto, testing it, uh, <laughs> putting fresh gas in it, drooling a hole in the vent. I mean, you ready? I decided to check the other end of the fuel line. And when I removed this fuel line from the carburetor, there was no fuel coming out at all. None, maybe a drop or two, you know? And then I loosened this side and it was pouring out. You guys saw in time-lapse how the fuel was pouring out of that gas tank. So the fuel line, when I took it off, I tried to blow through it, listen. Taking a look at this, the fuel line over here is collapsed. You can't even, you can't even blow. It's collapsed. I'm gonna get a pair of side cutters and I'm gonna show you where it's collapsed. Okay, so look, I'm gonna cut it like around here because this feels good. Look at that. You guys see that? See how it looks like there's two layers? That's a collapsed fuel line. See how the hole starts getting smaller? Look at this side's diameter of the hole. Clean, right? And big. Now it's collapsed, so the hole is much smaller. Look at this one, the other side of this. It's almost closed. That's all we needed was a new fuel line, because this fuel line was collapsed. I don't get too many collapsed fuel lines, but it's always interesting to see. Let's cut another two inches. Yep, it's throughout. Throughout the whole fuel line, it's collapsed. It's starting to get a little better there. And much better here, but you can see it's starting to collapse there when it becomes another layer, you know? Yeah, you know what? It's throughout this whole thing. Just really bad on that end. Yep. You look at that. This fuel line is... Dunsky. All right. Change the fuel line. <laughs> what? A collapsed fuel line. That's got to be it, right? Can't be anything else. Here we go. <laughs> what does a gas engine require? That's right, it requires fuel. <laughs> if your fuel line is collapsed and it's not getting any fuel, it's not gonna run, duh, you know? So something as simple as changing a fuel line fixed the problem. Now it starts in one pool and runs great, you know what I mean? So, I mean, it was obvious. Once I saw that fuel line collapsed, I knew that was the issue. It wasn't getting enough fuel, you know? Well, it wasn't anything wrong with the Magneto because we tested it and had really good numbers. You can hear it doesn't surge anymore. The reason why it surged was because the fuel air mixture wasn't right. Why wasn't it right? because it was getting too much air to the fuel. It wasn't get, hardly getting any fuel. So it was basically just running on fumes, you know what I mean? Causing a surge, which is a carburetor issue. And like I always say, a surging issue is always a carburetor issue. The balance of the air to fuel ratio is off, you know? That's why some of the older carburetors had a fuel, uh, air fuel mixture screw, which is helpful in dialing it in. New carburetors these days don't have it. It's just like you put it on and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you can't do anything about it other than maybe drilling out the hole of the jet, which, you know, there are certain lay people are not gonna know to do that or wanna do that or even know how to do that, you know? So uh, this was elementary, even though I did like a million things to this thing to get it running right. So uh, uh, I'm feel pretty good about it now, you know? Good, you know? 
Thanks all for joining me on this episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.